Hi guys, we're in the EPI shop today. Um, today we're going to tear apart and show you how to change the clutching on the 2014 700 Viking. It's a new model out this year and uh, it's a little bit different than working on the older Rhinos and stuff. So we'll give you a, a quick overview of everything. Um, real quickly, we just kind of, you pull the side plastic off that sits up here, pull that off. Next step will be pulling these vent lines off and they go onto your clutch cover. This one sits in here. Normally got to pull this one off first and then this one will be sitting up here. Just remove that. Once you get those removed, pull all the clutch cover bolts out to keep track of all the sizes because there's different lengths and different sizes on there. Once you pull that off, it's going to reveal your clutches. This is going to be your primary clutch or your drive clutch. This is going to be your secondary clutch or your driven clutch. All right, now that you can see the clutches, what you're going to want to do is remove, there's four bolts on here. They are different sizes. So just remove the four bolts off of this, your guard on there. Remove that. And we've loosened this up ahead of time just to speed up the video. These normally be tight. You just back these off. And then what you want to do is grab on the back side of the clutch. These are hot because we were just running it. Um, so if you need to wear gloves and then keep your thumb on this inner part and just pull everything off. And you'll see the clutch here. The rollers are inside here. We'll show you that later. And then here's the back side of the clutch. And then this shaft, sometimes it'll come off with the clutch. Sometimes it stays on there. Um, one thing to kind of watch on these is sometimes these will get a little bit of grease on the ends and things. So just make sure you don't get it on your belt. And if you do, make sure you clean up real good before you put everything back together. So we'll set that off to the side for now. The other thing I did is to make this belt loose, I took one of these four bolts that were in here, I threaded it in one of these holes and threaded it in. What that does is it expands that clutch open and takes the tension off the belt so it gives you more working room with it. And then again just remove this nut. And pull the clutch off. Might have to remove that wire. And one thing when you're taking this off, whether you're just changing the belt or doing a whole clutch thing, is make sure you're watching in what direction these arrows are going. Um, and you normally want them so it's going the same direction the motor's turning. And then also so you can read the, the numbers on there from left to right. Um, and the biggest thing is however you take, however the belt was on there, even if it was wrong, on there wrong, make sure you put the belt on the same way it came off. If you put a new belt on, always try to make it so the reading's right back side of the secondary and then the last thing to remove the clutches is just to slide this off and it's your back sheave there whenever you pull these off just set them on a nice clean surface and then uh, we'll show you how to go through and clean everything up all right to speed things up we already we've already disassembled the primary clutch but basically what you do is when you first see the clutch this is going to be on there like that and it'll have all these bolts in there just remove these bolts and then pry this up just got to be careful there's an o-ring in there that helps seal the grease and keep everything in there just make sure that you don't damage that if you do just make sure you replace it um, pull that up set it aside then what you'll see inside there is there there'll be this grease now this is a brand new machine so the grease is pretty good sometimes on older machines or if it's been underwater this will be almost looking like mud and just dirty dusty and stuff like that if it's really bad, what you want to do is clean out really good and then replace it with the, the correct grease from your Yamaha thing. It's called automatic grease. Um, it's a special kind of grease just made for your clutches. And you can want to use the right amount. Um, you know, this is brand new here. It looks like as rough as I meant, it's about a quarter inch all the way around. Once it gets heated up and flung around, it kind of balances itself out. Um, but your dealer would be able to tell you the exact amount of what to use in there. Um, when you pull this plate out, it's going to come out like this. Um, there's four little, they look pink here, um, sometimes they're brown, sometimes they're black, but they're little plastic things, um, little sliders. If they come off, just make sure you put them back in, check them for wear, um, and you're good to go. What that uh, does also reveal is you'll see your eight roller weights. These are the stock weights in here. Um, what you do is pull them out, and whenever you have your clutches apart, you want to inspect them. Make sure they're good and round, they're not flat spotted or cracked or broke or anything like that. 
Um, if they are, you want to replace them because you want them nice and smooth because they roll up and down those little valleys there. So, um, so once you get that, you should be good to go. When you get to this point, you just pull these out. There will be a little bit of grease on them. Pull them out, set them aside. With the new EPI kit, you're going to get new weights and a new housing. And you just got to push them together. And what they'll do is you have your metal weight and you have the, the roller housing. And you just push them together. You just there, there'll be a, a lip on one side, so make sure you start on the other side. And they should go together pretty easy. Sometimes they're a little bit harder than that, but what you do is, as long as you can get them pressed in there, press all the way in there, you're good to go. Um, some of the kits might have actually two sets of weights or two different grams of weights. Um, they might be a 12 and a 14, for example. So you might have a package of four of one size and a four of another. So just kind of keep track of it that way. Um, once you get going, then it's just a matter of putting them in there, just like you did. Make sure you got them put in there. Now, if you have um, two different size weights, what you want to do is you want to go every other weight. So, you know, say these were 12, so you'd put 12 and then a 14, the 12 and a 14 as you go all the way around. Um, this particular one, we're using the same weight, so it doesn't matter. We're just going all the way around on them. And um, again, if your clutch is dirty, you just want to clean it out really good, use some brake cleaner, contact cleaner, wipe it all out, blow it out, and then put new grease in it. Um, but that's pretty simple. That's pretty much it. And once you do that, just put it back in there. That grease will usually go back down with it. And once you get done with that, you just line up your holes and push this back down. And then... It'll usually kind of pop on there and then just put all your bolts back in and that'll get most of what you need to do on your primary clutch done. All right now now is time to work on the secondary. Uh, basically what you want to do is you got to break this nut loose. You don't want to take it all the way off because it's under a lot of spring tension but you can see where the green lines are here. That was lined up, we, so we broke it loose just about an eighth of a turn or so. Um, if you go eighth to a quarter, that's usually good enough to, to make it work. Um, and what we did is, this, this is the CCT510 clutch compression tool. And when, then we just take that and we'll um, compress the clutch down on there. You add the adapter. Just want to set in there everything. So when, basically what we're going to do is this will come down and compress that spring. And then we'll be able to get that nut off by hand. It doesn't take a whole lot of down, but you just just basically take the tension off it, and you can hand spin this wash or the nut off. Once you get that off, make sure it's free. Now you do. Do is back this off. And the spring is out nice and safe. You got your nut, your collar, and your spring. Pretty basic. Um, once you get to this point, again, it's a good time to clean the clutches. This one's a brand new clutch, but take an air hose, blow everything out, take some sandpaper, real light sandpaper, emery cloth, and just scuff it up a little bit. Don't want to put any deep scratches or anything, but just, uh, you can if you want, just give her, get the belt glazing off there, take some brake cleaner, wipe it down real good, and then you're good to go. Um, then to put the, the spring back in, it's pretty much opposite. You set your spring in there, put your collar on, make sure it seats, make sure your nut's on there. What I'm going to do is tighten it back down. 
There's no really alignment marks or anything on this one. It's just a uh, straight compression. Just compress it down. And I don't know if you can see in there or not, but then it's just, you just got to start the nut. Once the, nuts, the nuts start on there and it's fairly tight, you back this back off, pull it out of the clutch tool here, and then torque that nut to the factory specs. All right, so now we got to get into the wet clutch, do the change on there. And so what we did is we already had the primary clutch off, the secondary clutch off. One thing to note on here is this clutch, when your bearing's good and everything's in there right, um, this shaft should turn counterclockwise and then lock up when you turn it clockwise. Um, something to note, some, some models you can flip around the bearing. This one, the bearing is actually pressed in there, so you can't really mix it up and, and put it in there backwards. Um, but what you need to do to get to the wet clutch is move, remove the, the cover bolts out of here. There's about seven, eight bolts, I think. Pull that off. Once you get that off, you will want to remember to drain your engine oil. Um, just, you know, the draining pan's right here. Because um, this will get into the side of your engine where, where engine or where the oil is. So drain your engine oil. What I like to do is I always put a rag here that keeps the oil from getting in your in your skid plates and stuff like that. Pull all these bolts out. Now there is a gasket behind here. Um, if the machine is brand new like this one, you might be able to reuse the gasket. If it's old and got some hot, you know, it's been overheated or really warm and stuff, chances are you're probably going to wreck that gasket. So you have to wreck, reorder that gasket and a new one from your Yamaha dealer. Uh, we'll normally have that part number in the instructions for you in case you want to order it ahead of time. So what you do is once you get all those bolts out, we've already had this one off so it comes off pretty easy. Um, but here's there's your wet clutch to the back side of it and here's your drum and your one-way bearing in there. So you just set that on a nice clean surface. And then to remove this nut, we've already loosened it up, but it's left-hand thread, so just make sure you note that. Um, it's the opposite of most threads, so you just got to back this off. Do with that, you set the nut down. On this one, there's just nuts. Sometimes there might be a wash and stuff on them, but... And then you just pull, carefully pull this off. Then we'll reveal your wet clutch and the shoes, and then the springs we're going to change are down in there. So we'll put this in the bench to show you how to change those. All right. So what we did is there's there's going to be six little e clips on here. Um, what I like to do is put a paper towel over the edge of them. That way you don't shoot one across the shop when you pop off. You just take a screwdriver, just kind of give it a. Little, I know it's going to be hard to see, but just give it a tap. What I did before that actually is th these are spring plates so I just put a, a C clamp in the vise some people use a big pliers and clamp down you just don't want to you know damage or, or, or wreck it but just put a little tension on there just to get the, the tension off the e-clips um, once you do that you can take it out of there you got your e-clips sitting there and then there'll be the plates there's three of them like that there and there Set them off the side. If you keep them in the same order, you, you know how exactly how they go in. Um, this shows the six springs. This is what we're going to change. Um, and you need to get in there. There's two ways to do it. You can either pop them off with a spring tool like this, um, or you can try to work them all, all the way up off the thing. I like to pop this end off first and then to get them loose. Usually, once you get going, it's not too bad. Might be a little bit hard to see in here, but basically I'm just pulling up on the spring to pop it loose. And I always hold down in the same shoe so you don't pull them up off the thing. And then move these before I lose them. So now each shoe is loose. You should be able to pull it off just like that. And this is the the most frustrating part for me. Um, you know, it just takes a little extra time and patience and stuff. 
But basically what you want to do is, just so you know how they hook in, just make sure you, you keep track of each one. But take the stock springs off. And when you go to like an EPI spring, they're going to be a little bit stronger and a little bit heavier duty or so they're a little bit tricky, trickier to get on compared to stock ones. But um, we're going to go to these and just work the one in, in on them all the way around, make sure they're fully seated down and around. And usually the first couple go pretty good. That's when you're trying to hook up the last one or two. That's usually when it, when it, uh, it's frustrating but sometimes it goes really easy and sometimes it might take you a couple shots but basically what we're gonna do now is just hook this other end into them and work our way all the way around so we got five out of the six done and this is usually where it gets tricky hook that one in there and hook that one in there I think that's the easiest it's ever gone for me <laughs> it's almost like I did something wrong um, but the good thing is it went easy, so then the thing is to carefully pick them up. Sometimes it's nice to have another hand or so, but basically what you want to do, is, I'll, sh I'll show you before I actually do it, is these poles here go back on these pins. So you just want to make sure, and usually by pulling out, that pulls the tension on them. It gets so you can pick it up, and then you got to kind of balance it in the air and hold it and... All kinds of stuff. All right, so I had to have a buddy help me jiggle our with both hands on there. We got it jiggled on there and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, there's still a gap here, but everything's still hooked in. You just want to make sure they stay hooked all all the way down, and then you just kind of work them way down. Usually, once you get one or two to go, they'll they'll work most of the way. And then what you'll see is there's. They're, they're down as pretty much as far as they'll let them go right now, but there's still a gap. What you need to do is tap them down enough to where this, this is sitting flat there. So sometimes you got to take a screwdriver and, and move that pin out just a little bit. And how you do that is just stick a screwdriver in there and push down on it. Um, sometimes, like this, uh, you can just work your way around. And once you get them, it goes pretty easy. You just want to make sure you're not prying or damaging this clutch material here, otherwise that'll affect your performance and your durability of that. There, now your seat, they're seated flat. There's no gap there, or very little gap. And that'll tell you that you're all the way down. And then what you do is put your plates back on. Again, just verify before you get all back together that all the springs are still hooked up, which these are. Slide this back on. And that. And we'll move over to the C clamp again. And what I like to use to put these back on is I get them in place. Sometimes you can push, actually push them on and they don't go too bad like that one. Otherwise what you can do is if you get them started, you can, you can take a pliers and get a hooked on the outside edge and just kind of work itself way on there too. Just like that. Just make sure that they're both on. Make sure that this point of this tip isn't sitting on that little rivet head there. Otherwise, it's not going to seat properly. All right, so we got your clutch back assembled. We're going to slide her back on the shaft here. Put your nut on. Remember, this is left-hand thread, so it's the opposite of normal. So we're going to tighten up the nut. And then you just put that to the factory spec and then what you want to do is clean out this gasket put a new gasket on if you damage it which is usually a good idea to do anyways um, got, if you're reusing the old one make sure it's clean and dry and then 
Um, once you get this tore tight, we'll put that cover plate on. Then what you want to do is slide the cover on. Again, making sure you don't damage your gasket or nothing. Sometimes it helps if you rotate that if it's stuck a little bit. And again, make sure that it rotates counterclockwise and won't uh, turn clockwise. And then put all your bolts in. And this one, the longer bolt oops, over here. In here. And we'll tighten that up and then we'll get back to showing you the rest. All right, so now this is your wet clutch housing that's back on. We bolted this plastic, the back plastic housing back on. So then what you want to do is um, once your clutch are good and clean, it's just a matter of throwing the clutches back on. You want to slide your back primary sheave back. And it should go all the way to the splines there, so make sure they're seated in there. And then secondary clutch can go on. There you go. Put that on. Not that goes on the center. One big thing too is make sure that your hands and everything else is clean because you've been digging in the oil and stuff like that. So you don't want to get any oil, grease, or anything else from the, the engine, machine, the clutches. You don't want to get that on the clutches or, or the belt because that will cause you lots of issues. So once everything's on there, you put this on. You don't have to have it super tight right yet. And then what I do is that this is the bolt we same one you used before to open up that clutch a little bit. You know what I mean? You don't have to go crazy on it, just enough to open it up, it gives it a little more slack on there. Again, on your belt, make sure to read it so you can read the, the letters from left to right so it reads normal and the oil the arrows point in the right direction and then shaft slide that back on and again sometimes there's a little bit of grease in that area so just be careful when you do that but um, sometimes oh, now I need to put the Put the machine in neutral, allow you to turn that over and get that on. If I would have thread that in farther, the clutch would have been opened up. It makes it a little bit easier too. Um, so once we got that on there, the big thing on the on the primary clutch is this is already assembled like we did before. What you always want to do whenever you move this once you get it assembled is make sure you carry it upright and your, your fingers on the back and your thumbs in the middle holding this th inner plate because if you tip this up, and you don't have a hole of that inner plate, especially when you're sliding it on stuff, that inner plate will move out and allow your rollers to drop out of place. So as long as you do it like this, and then one other thing to key on is there's splines right here. You'll see them poke through, and usually there's just a just a touch of those splines sticking out. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to hold that tight until you get your nut and washer on there. And one other thing, you might have to jiggle that belt up and down behind it to get it to go all the way on. And there it's about an eighth of an inch of spline sticking out. And then your washer and your nut go on. And just hold that inner plate until you get these tight or at least snugged up to where they can't come loose. And then we'll torque those to factory specs, move this bolt out of there, and then we'll put the, the guard back on. Alright, so now we've torqued the, the primary clutch nut on, the secondary nut, and then we removed the, the bolt so the belt was tight. We spun the, belt, the clutches around to reset the belt tension on there, and then now we installed the guard. When you do that, there's a dull pin on this side and down here. Just make sure those are in there, um, and those are the ones that take a little bit longer bolts. And then from there, it's a matter of putting on your clutch cover. Alright, so we got the clutches on. Now we're just tighten up the clutch cover, throw on your vent tubes here and here. 
um, this one you want to hook on this side first that butts up to here and then snake the, the other one down and and hook that up and then put your side panel on here and you guys are ready to rock and roll if you have any questions you can call our tech department 218-829-6036